joining us today. I'm Scott Olson with the Olson Group, and we're with our special guest, John Lee, Vice President of Sales and Marketing for TimberCon. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk to John today was um, I've done some work with him, and something that always seems to come up is his feelings around passion and how important passion is uh, in the work that we do. So I wanted to explore more about that in a few other areas too. So, but before we go into the passion, I wanted to get a little more background. And um, you know, I know you have your education in physics, you have uh, a master of science, and close to a PhD. But how did someone with this type of a background uh, transition from that to you know, sale, the sales and marketing realm? Well, I was always interested in science as a kid. You know, biology, chemistry, etc. From fourth grade, um, I had a teacher that you know, taught me the scientific method. So I've always been interested in science, how things work. And as I went to school, you know, both high school and then deciding to go to college in physics, and then graduate school at the Institute of Optics, um, no one really would believe that I was a physicist because I was much more outgoing. In fact, at college in my undergraduate, I started a group called Dell Squared Psi because none of the science groups had, you know, had organizations. So I created my own, you know, all six of us. But, uh, you know, I've always been somewhat outgoing. And so science or, you know, sales, really uh, having the physics background gives me the technical ability to sell. What are the characteristics that you look for most when you are hiring new sales? There's probably a better way to say this, but they gotta give a damn. I really look for someone that cares. Not just about themselves or their family or their church or their last job, but you can tell if someone really cares. You know, that goes back to passion, right? If you find someone without passion, without a strong internal desire to do something, then they'll never do something. You know, the old saying was, you want something done, find a busy person. Same thing with passion. If you want to get something done, if you want a great employee, have someone that believes in something. I don't really care what it is. Because if they believe in something, I can get them to believe in my team, in my company, in my product, in our customers. Okay? But if they are lukewarm, if they are just doing an eight to five, they don't really care. I don't care what you do with them. They'll never be successful. You have hired and looking for that passion. What other things are they doing that make them successful that you've seen? They give them the edge over the ones that are just kind of doing okay. When I was selling into Korea, the Koreans taught me a very important lesson, and that was to take my shoes off and walk into their shoes. If I really look at my successful salespeople, they're able to do that for their customer. They become the customer internally. We've all heard that before, right? But they really are able to take their shoes off and walk in the shoes of their customer and see how their answers are going to affect the customer. Would they want that answer? Is that how they would like to hear it? You know, and when you put yourself in that perspective of looking at the problem, not from your viewpoint, or from your company's viewpoint, but from the customer's viewpoint, I think you become much more successful. It's no longer, it's $100 for this pin, you know, go buy the product. You know, at TimberCon, we don't sell products. We just don't. You know, if you want a two-meter patch cord, you're going to buy it from China. We really, really sell solutions. We find a problem, and we try and find the best solution to that problem. So it's not $100 for a pin. It's, oh my God, you have a fiber optic cable on top of a mountain at an observatory at minus 20 degrees, and it's got a flex. How do I do that? And then presenting that information in such a way that the customer is going to be you know, appreciative of that answer and willing to pay the price that it takes to do that. What's been your experience and trying to identify how much influence you can have over um, the amount of passion someone brings into the workplace. You have to have the seed. 
I mean, the seed of passion has to be there. And I think a good manager, mentor, coach, whatever word is invoked this week or this year, this century, you know, I've always talked about mentoring and something that I felt that you know, our culture has sorely lacked in the last 20 years. I mean, it used to be a big thing. We just don't do it as much anymore. I've had good mentors throughout my career. And I think when you mentor a salesperson when they're working for you, when you find that seed, you show them how you are passionate about things. You know, when people see me talk, you know, they talk to me about passion because they see it in my voice. And they will start to mimic and, and create that same type of passion. You know, some of my salespeople like Mike, you know, it's amazing to watch him as he's grown in his career. And he shows that same passion, that intensity. Um, Nolan, much quieter, soft-spoken Southern guy, but still has that desire and that passion, although it's a, a quieter water you know, underneath. So you can enhance it, you can grow the seed into a plant, but it's by being, I think, not a boss, not a friend, okay, but a coach, a mentor, showing them the way. What would your parents say about you? <laughs> um, both my parents are still alive. My father's uh, will be married in San Mateo next year and we're going next week on a birthday vacation together. Um, I believe he would say that uh, he was very proud of what I've done uh, in my career and in my personal life. Uh, I've been married about 30 years, uh, three beautiful young girls, uh, all grown up now, uh, and, and I believe that, that he would say that he was proud of my accomplishments. Um, when I was about 20, he probably wouldn't have said that. Because <laughs> there were some tough times. My mother uh, is in Minnesota, and uh, we talk uh, often. And uh, she has expressed to me um, her belief that I couldn't do what I have done without God's help. So she, I think she would give uh, God a little bit more of the glory and, and me a little less.